Hi, I'm Michelle Nyhouse, and with support from the Pulitzer Center, photographer Lynn Johnson and I have been reporting on what we call the cook stove conundrum for National Geographic magazine. About three billion people worldwide cook on open or barely contained fires, and the costs of those fires are steep. They produce about 400 cigarettes worth of smoke every hour. So over the course of a childhood or over the course of a lifetime, that's a lot of secondary smoke to be inhaling. And they are a significant source, a significant cause of long-term health problems among women and children in the developing world. They're also a cause of deforestation. They're a cause of local air pollution. And they produce a great deal of black carbon, which is a contributor to climate change. So you'd think with all these long-term and short-term problems at the local and planetary level that switching to cleaner, safer, more efficient stoves would be a relatively easy matter. Uh, what we have found is that it, the problem is a lot more complex and change is a lot more complex than it might seem um, at the surface. And uh, those complexities reflect the complexities of any kind of technology transfer from the developed to the developing world. In some cases, families don't use the stoves they receive from aid groups uh, simply because the design is too complicated or too unfamiliar um, for them to be able to take time out of their busy, stressful lives to learn how to use. Um, in other cases, stoves are not appropriate for the location, um, for the family, they're the wrong size, they're too small for a large family, for instance, um, or they're just not appropriate for the cuisine. The, the stove that makes wonderful injera in Ethiopia is not the same stove that makes terrific tortillas in Guatemala. And then there's also some, some deeper problems that have to do with family dynamics. Just because the person who spends the most time in the kitchen is supportive of change doesn't mean that everybody in the household supports change. Um, we spent some time with some Guatemalan midwives who have spent a great deal of time working as part of a public health study in the highlands of Guatemala, and they said, you know, the, the biggest barrier to change in the kitchen are critical mothers-in-law, and if a, if a mother-in-law doesn't like the tortillas that are coming out of the kitchen that her daughter-in-law is making, she's not going to support a new stove. So there's a, a gradual process and a, and a very um, delicate process that has to happen in order for change to be long term and for change to be full time. Um, all that said, we did find some really encouraging, innovative um, programs that are happening in Guatemala and beyond. Um, there's a stove, there are two stove stores now in Guatemala where families that are owned locally and families can come and choose the stove that they want to use, they can choose their fuel, uh, they can choose their design and have a lot more control over their new stove than they might otherwise and therefore are much more likely to use it full time and to use it long term. And we also found that young families, young couples who are able to set up house separate from the family compound are much more interested in cleaner air and are much more open to change and much more likely to use a more efficient stove both in the interest of their health and in the interest of clean air for their community. So we've seen from talking to aid groups and talking to them about the work that they've done over the years, we've seen that they've learned, like many other aid groups have learned, that even problems that seem incredibly straightforward are much more complex than they appear and that no two families are alike, no two communities are alike, and no two countries and cultures are alike.